Okay. All right. So we 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 talk as um as coaches, and there's things that when you go back and you watch watch the video, though you're watching the, you're watching the games, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play, right. You need to be able to watch them to understand what is what. Yeah, and then um, one of the best ways to look at is, is what would you do to guard you, and what would you do to uh, you know uh, if you were. If you're you, knowing how somebody's going to guard you, what would you need to change? That's, you know, and, and that's that's one of the things that I just, you know, somebody just shared that with me that, that I said I have to share that with you. Because sometimes when I'm trying to explain to people what they need to do, they don't really understand where it's coming from. They may take it as a disrespect. They may take it as, you know, trying to put their game down. And that's not what I'm trying to say. Uh, you need to be able to evaluate you. You need to be able to, to understand what to look for. So when you look at yourself playing, put yourself on the defensive side. And say, okay, if I'm playing defense against myself, what would I do to stop me? Let him shoot, you know, force him left, force him right, you know, pressure him or whatever. The next thing is, so, you know, because for me as a, as, a, as a coach, that's what I do. Is that it's to evaluate and assess, you know, what needs to happen. So when I look at the style of play and I look at the way we play, anything to do with straight, straight speed, we win. Right? Would you agree with that? If it comes to that straight speed, one through twelve, it, it, you never I, for us to find a team as, as, as fast as us, not gonna find it. It's that straight speed. Anything we do on the ground, battling under the rim, we win. We out rebound everybody. I can't remember the last time we got out rebounded, but we we get out rebounded for a reason. And we out rebound teams for for a reason because on the ground we fight, which is great. So we win when it comes to straight speed, and we win when it comes to the, the fight, and the battle. Where we lose is we don't change speeds. We play one one gear. Go back and watch. So that means even the slowest players that we play against try to guard this. And the other thing is we don't we don't play like this. And we're gonna look at some of that today. We don't float, we don't go from left to right. So we don't go from left to right and we don't change speeds. Yeah. So imagine you take straight speed that you have now and now you now build stop start left right. Now you have Derrick Rowe, D Wade, you have all this. Because I tell him every day, I tell, I tell Joe Ham that he's Dwayne Wade, he's Derrick Rose. And when I look at some of you athletically, it's the same thing. Because athletically you're on that level, but you don't. So we're gonna so the things that we're gonna do today is, is to focus on that. I train athletes, volleyball, football, my whole like for probably the majority of my basketball, my, my training life was training athletes. You know, you spent time with me. Right? So we we just haven't got to that yet. The major thing you we have to start doing consistently in order to develop stop start speed is you have to work on your hips and your glutes. Because your hips and your glutes are what's gonna stop you, start you, move, shift you left to right, and it's gonna lock the knees in place. So your knees don't cave when you try to shift hard left, right, and all that kind of stuff. So your hips and your glutes. Your lungs, right? Your lungs are easy. Because I'm right now I'm dealing with like Dante Millis, like Dante is probably like a pro athlete. Conditioning wise, he can run. But you put him in a squat and tell him to hold us, he can't hold it. He can't even get in a squat. So for him to play low, his muscles fatigue. And I, and I keep telling him, and I'm like, I'm telling you, there's a different types of stamina you need to develop. There's your lungs that you can make you run. You can run forever and then there's your, your, your muscles. So if I need to repeat this movement of going down and back up, down and back up, or I need to repeat an explosive movement over and over again that requires muscle endurance, my lungs might be good, but, the, but once the legs and the muscles are done, you're done. It doesn't matter what the legs do. So in, in important muscles like, you know, and, and, and uh, like your hips and your glutes, you know, and, and stuff, stuff like that, Except when they're gone, you can't lift up your foot to run. So that's how important it is. You can't run. You can't run without them. So you, all your speed is gone. Your jumping is gone. If you have problems taking off, 
once the game starts, right? <laughs> Conditioning, you should be able to jump just as high at the beginning of the game as you can at the end of the game, whether your lungs feel it or, or, or not, right? So I'm saying that, and then the, the reason why we lose the battle under the, under the, under the rim, the, the way we lose the battle under the rim is not the fight for the rebound, it's touch. The problem right now is when you leave the ground, they're better leaving the ground than you. What they can do in the air is, is a different type of agility. The finishes, the this, the that. We talk about all the finish package. You go back and watch our matches, watch the different finishes and count the amount of different finishes that, that we collectively as a group. And you're gonna see the same thing all the time. Finger roll in front of the rim, straight on on the right side. But you rarely ever see reverse opposite hand on the reverse opposite hand on the other side. Reverse on the other side of the rim. How many finishes do you have? Like floaters, one foot floater, two foot floater. And we, we talk about this all, all the time. So once you leave the ground, we're losing the battle. On the ground, we win the battle. But we miss so many damn layups that we go get them back, that we always out-rebound teams because we fight. So what I'm saying is, there's, and there's a few other things too, we don't shoot at the same clip as they do. We need to be better shooters. When you look at that, if you don't take that as an insult, and you don't take that as a, oh, somebody's trying to disrespect it, oh yeah, yeah, I can't be a basketball, that, that, that. You know? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you, if you look at it for what it is, you take what strengths we have, you, you take what, what's missing, and you begin to close that gap, right? Then what, then, then what do you have? What type of player do you have? You have a player that's gonna dominate anywhere on this planet, all right? All I'm saying is, so if you buy in, so what I'm gonna show you today, right? I want you to focus on the technique of it, right? The, the technique of it, right? And don't worry about, um, like, I don't want you to worry about whether uh, there's, there's discomfort, there's pain you're gonna, you're gonna feel, right? Things are uncomfortable. But part of that might be because of your mobility, right? When you have poor mobility, getting into a position to do something can be very hard. Once you get past the mobility, then it's strength. Right, so you, you know, focus on where you may be at. You might be a situation where you, it might be a mobility situation. And once you fix the mobility, then you can build strength. Then once you build strength, now you can build power, right? Some of you might already be, have good mobility and it's, it's, it's strength and they're ready for power. Some of you might have both and now you're ready for, to be explosive, right? So you might be at, at different places. So don't even worry about being frustrated. You can turn off that now.